Hey friends, what's up? In today's video, I want to focus on how you can be more productive and efficient in VS Code navigating through your code. And of course, the answer is always just use Vim, but if you don't enjoy Vim, then this video is for you because we're going to go through how to use keyboard shortcuts, how to optimize your setup in VS Code. And this isn't just for sake of efficiency because of course you're going to save time but that's really not it you're spending hours of your day banging on this computer like a caveman right at least you should worry about your health a bit which is deteriorated by constantly using your mouse so use keyboard shortcuts and you're going to live longer probably all right so i was actually inspired recently listening to this episode pro vs code setups which you can listen to yourself or watch it on youtube they actually go more over how to customize your vs code among other things so this is really a great listen or watch if you want to but i'm going to mostly focus on keyboard shortcuts today and if you see any setting i use today and you're like oh what does he use what is that setting and etc i have all the links in the description including to what i use so you can find anything you want here but yeah, that's basically it. Let's get started. All right, so the first pro tip before you do anything is to enable and increase repeat delay. So regardless, if you're using Linux, Windows or Mac, this thing has the same name. You just need to Google it where you can find it so you can enable it. For me, I use Linux, by the way, I can go here under accessibility and then here under repeat keys, we can actually read what this is. Key presses repeat when the key is held down and then you can even go here and then you can increase it to your liking, of course. So let me actually show you how this works and this is going to be an emulation actually because let's say for example that you're typing your code like this and there is actually a physical limit or if your code or typing feels like molasses for example just try it out using your spacebar can you do something like this for example look how this looks like when i have repeat delay i can just go like a machine gun Brrr. there is like actually no resistance that i have and this is that allows you to move smoothly through your code this quickly right this is very awesome and then you're actually going to feel it because it's literally a limitation. You're going to start typing function and you can't type any faster than this. So I highly encourage you to increase repeat delay if you want. You're going to start to type a lot quicker. It might feel awkward and if you make a lot of mistakes, then you need to adjust it. But yeah, basically that's what's going to let you type like a machine gun. And it really feels great because you can navigate your code more smoothly. And I actually don't use the GUI in Linux, by the way. I can just go here and I use something called Xset. So this is how I can set this in Linux, but it's probably similar on Mac and on Windows. I don't know. You can just open the settings and adjust this however you want. And that's basically it. So before you do anything, please adjust your repeat delay. All right. So you might have noticed that I have a really minimal VS Code setup and that is really simple to achieve. So just disable all of the things that you don't want. You can notice I don't have that crap at the top. If I open the sidebar, I don't have that large activity bar. Yes, I know that you can now move it where you want, but actually that's really useless. Just learn shortcuts. And let's actually learn one of the most powerful shortcuts that you can have. So again, abandon your mouse clicking, just try using shortcuts. So we can use the command palette first. And this is the center command for everything that you do. So if you press control P by default, this is going to list all of the files in your project. You can also press control shift P. This is going to open the actual command palette where you can issue commands in VS Code, right? But I actually always prefer to just say control P. And then I usually want to open a file. And if I want to run a command, I can just use the pointy boy. And we're going to look at some other things later. So you can actually do everything from here. So for example, let's say that maybe you're like asking, okay, but what if I want to open extensions and I can't remember the extension? Again, use your command palette. You can just start typing view extensions, show extensions, boom. All right, so now let's say again that you don't know how to go back. View explorer, show explorer, boom. And if you don't know the shortcut is depending on your operating system, control shift X, control shift E, and you have other things for GitHub, for example. I think this is because I have some extensions. So for me, it's control shift G, and then I have to press G again. So I'm going to open this like that. And just remember the shortcuts or use the command palette, and you won't have to touch your mouse or these things ever again. And I also want to mention that I rarely also use the sidebar to navigate and add files. I mostly do it in tutorials to give people the context of what I'm doing, right? But usually I'm going to use this extension. Let me just see if I say new file utils, new file relative to project root, or there are some other options and then you can just add whatever you want. Let me actually show you again, why is the shortcut control shift X, boom. Now I go inside of my shortcuts here and here it is. Let me just find it where it is file utils. Okay. So this was actually something that I got after listening to the Syntax FM episode, Text Pastry. 
this is really awesome if you want to do line numbers 1 to 10 etc for numbers generation and etc if you're not using Emmet and those things but yeah actually let me just see some other things you can actually look at my extensions and get them if you want so file utils really useful one and there really isn't anything here that is that important for this yeah but you can actually get a bunch of extensions i like to keep things clean but yeah for now control shift e back that's it Oh, and of course, I didn't even mention Control B for opening and closing the sidebar. And let me also show you how you can enable and disable a lot of these things in the GUI. So, for example, you can right click on anything and you can hide it or whatever, even in your status bar down here. For example, I have this where it is. You can have, for example, Git Lens Commit Graph. If this is something that annoys you, you can just disable it. You can hide the entire status bar if you want, but I actually find it useful. And also, of course, how are you going to go through settings? I'm not going to click around some menus and etc. I'm just going to press Ctrl P, then I'm going to press the pointy boy, and I'm going to just start typing settings. I let VS Code auto complete it. I don't even need to remember these things. All right, so here you can open the UI. I actually prefer to open JSON. So we can open this JSON, and you can see here I have all of these settings. Again, if you want to look at my settings, you can just go to the link what I use and etc. And all of this is going to be there. And as you can see, I disable tabs, which is something new I'm trying because actually I'm like, why do I need tabs? I don't even need tabs. I don't use tabs. And I'm going to show you how you can navigate around your code more easily and why you don't need tabs. And the only thing I have enabled, which I'm trying out is breadcrumbs. So for example, if I look here at breadcrumbs, where are the breadcrumbs? Okay, here it is. All right, cool. So let's see, enable. If I say false, it's going to hide the breadcrumbs, but I'm just trying it out. And so far I like it. I don't even have shortcuts in terms of breadcrumbs, so you can navigate that. But yeah, basically, you should adjust your code editor how you want it. But yeah, I'm just going to close it. And if you missed that, that was Control W for closing the tab. All right, so let's move on. And I should also probably mention the keyboard shortcut for toggling the terminal I use, which is Control plus period. So you can open and close the terminal. And of course, we all have different keyboard layouts. So all of these shortcuts, even if I didn't change them, wouldn't be the same. But let me actually show you how you can change them. So press Control P. Pointy boy, start typing shortcuts. You can open the JSON file if you want for the keyboard shortcuts, but I actually love this simple UI. And then we can start typing, for example, view terminal. And we should see it somewhere here. Okay, so you have here view toggle terminal. And here, when you hover over it, you can see this pencil, and then you can set a new keyboard shortcut if you want, or you can press escape to cancel it. And don't worry, if you goof something up, you can go here, you can right click, you can remove the key binding, or you can reset the key binding, and that's perfectly it. And also, this is actually another point I want to mention, you can already see, sometimes it's okay to click on things, it's actually perfectly nice. Maybe you use something so rarely that you don't even know the shortcut or even care about, it's actually perfectly fine to have a GUI for some things. I even change it up for Git, for example. Sometimes I use the terminal, sometimes I feel like using the GUI because it's nice and convenient. There is no gatekeeping here. Just use what you prefer. All right, so moving forwards, I'm going to do my best to give you the actual name you can find in the keyboard shortcuts and change it to your liking. But first, let's open some file that we can use as a playground. So I'm going to open this search.svelte. It's really not important the contents of this file. It could be gibberish for all I care. And I don't want to insult you, but I also don't want to assume what someone knows. So let's actually start with the very basic. So of course, everyone knows using left and arrow right keys to move the cursor left or right. And this, of course, just moves your cursor. But if you want to select something, you can hold down shift and you can do it selecting character by character. And then you get more advanced. You can hold down control and press left or right arrow key. And then you can move a word. And the name for this is cursor word left and cursor word right. And of course, we can combine Control and Shift to select word by word, right? And this is really nice and easy. All right, but let's say that we want to add a piece of state here. Of course, we can say Enter, and this is going to put us on a new line below, and we can start typing whatever we want. But let's actually say that maybe we want to add some state above, and we can, of course, move the cursor with the arrow key, and then we can position it like this. But actually, we can use another shortcut. Control shift enter to insert a line above and now we can start typing the same as before. And another shortcut I have for moving to the start and end of each line is alt right arrow and alt left arrow. And this is called cursor line start and cursor line end. So you can find it and change it to your liking. All right, so let's start with some more advanced shortcuts. So for example, let's say that we want to select these lines from 16 to 19. You can probably press control shift and use your arrow keys and you would get their repeat delay overpowered by the way so you can do something like that or you can actually use control plus l to select the line 
So this is called expand line selection. So you can press Ctrl plus L. And if you continue pressing it, you're going to select more lines. So pressing it four times, we can quickly select this. Boom, done. And now we can do whatever you want with this piece of text. All right, so now maybe you want to move the line. So I can actually use the shortcut Alt plus up or down arrow key. And this is called move line up and move line down. So you can do something like this, which is really convenient. So for example, let's say that I want to quickly move this search term to the top. I can just do it like that. And that's basically it. And now I can bring it back here where it was like that. And let's talk about another awesome shortcut, which is control plus D. So this is going to select the word and continue selecting the word. And the name of this is add selection to next find match. So let's say, for example, that you have a word that you want to select here. In this case, it's maybe search and you should probably instead of doing this, you should do a rename using F2 on your keyboard. But let's just say that you just want to quickly select. You can press Ctrl D and you can just keep pressing Ctrl D until you select every instance you want. And then you can rename it to whatever you want. But of course, you can revert this and you should probably press F2 to rename every instance of this. So let's look at another awesome keyboard shortcut, which is expanding and contracting selection. So for example, let's say that if you're here and you want to select things up to this curly brackets, of course, you can do something like that and remove it. And then you remove these curly braces. But of course, there's an easier way and you can be positioned anywhere you want here. So I can press shift alt and I can use my left or right arrow key to expand or contract this selection. And you can see we can actually select it to this part that we want and we can do it very easily. And of course you can select it to the scope that you want. You can even go further, select all of this file. And this is called shrink selection and expand selection. And here you maybe want to copy this line quickly over. Well, instead of using control plus C and V, you can just actually, for me, it's shift alt and then up or down arrow is going to quickly copy over this line. And then since you have it already, you can also use that other trick. So you can move this line however you want. Control L to quickly select this and remove it if you want. And here's another cool one. So maybe you want to add a cursor to the end of these lines, whatever you want to do. Maybe this is a component, who knows, right? So maybe you can select them like this using Control plus L. And then you can press Shift Alt I to create a cursor at the end of the line if you need it. And now you can modify this however you want. And of course, you can use your other shortcuts. You can put it at the start of the line. You can put it at the end of the line. You can do whatever you want. All right, so let me show you more awesome keyboard shortcuts. So for example, let's say that I'm trying to assign search and I goof something else. For example, I can just say banana. And this isn't related to TypeScript. This is any error message or warning from your editor. So your first instinct might be, okay, I'm just going to use my mouse and hover over it to see what it's yelling at me at. And no, stop using your mouse, okay? So I'm going to hide the mouse away. I'm just going to gracefully glide to search. And then instead of doing that, you can have your cursor anywhere if it's on the word, right? I'm going to press Ctrl plus E and I'm going to get the same information. And this is called show or focus hover. And let me actually show you another one. So for example, maybe I'm going to reassign it. Okay, I see my options. Uh, thank you, TypeScript. I see idle load ready, but maybe I fat finger escape or something. And oh gosh. Now it's gone. What I'm going to do? Oh my God, I'm going to go back. I'm going to press this again. Oh, no, no, you don't have to do this. If you press escape by accident, for me, I use this shortcut. I can press control I to get back these options. And this works for anything else. So for example, search worker, I want to add an event listener or I want to see what all the other options are. Oops, I lose the context, whatever. Control plus I, boom, I get it back again. And this is called trigger suggest. Okay, so here I have some more awesome keyboard shortcuts for you. Let's say, for example, you're like strolling for your code. You're like, oh, okay, what is this on click initialize? Like, what are you going to do? Are you going to press Control F, search for it? Or are you going to use your mouse to scroll up to where that function is? Well, no, that's insanity, right? So I actually have this key cord set up in VS Code. I can actually just speak by pressing Control plus D and I can say I and then I'm going to get this small window open and I can just say, oh, OK, this is it. And this could be in another file. It's really not important. It just happens by chance that it's in the same file. Right. And then I can close this. But for example, let's say that I don't want to pick. I just want to go straight to the function. I can actually just press Control plus D and I can press D again and I'm going to jump to that function. So that is peak definition and go to definition. All right. Here's another cool random shortcut. So you can press Ctrl plus G to jump any line or column. So for example, let's say that we jump to line 100. We can just say it like that or any line you want. You can jump to it very easily using this. 
So this is very handy when you get some error and it's like error on line 20 and you're like, okay, what is line 20? I don't even want to find it. Okay, it's somewhere here. Okay, 20, boom, we're on that line. But yeah, that's an awesome shortcut. Okay, so here's another really useful one. So let's say, for example, you're in this file and you know there's a button somewhere, but where is that button? What you're going to do, you're going to press Control F and then you start typing button. Of course, you can also use the awesome Svelte Inspector, but no, let's stop this insanity. Use symbols. So let me just go back to the top of the file and I'm going to press Control P. And you can start typing other things. You can start typing this pound sign. So you can start using symbols like this, but this is usually too much information. And usually, what I actually prefer to use, you can just use at. And this is going to go through every symbol in your file. So you can see there's a lot of things here. So this is really useful also for Markdown to go through headings and those other things. All right, so here you have this symbol, but of course, you're not going to go through all of these things. You're just going to start typing button. Oh, here's this button open search. Okay, and maybe if you don't want to go to the button, you can just remove what you had and you're going to be at your initial position. So take advantage of searching for symbols. All right, friends, that's basically all of the shortcuts. I really didn't want to overwhelm me with 100 shortcuts I don't use and etc. These are just the most used shortcuts I use. So you can really start incorporating them slowly if you want and add other shortcuts. But actually, before I go, I actually want to show you something cool. So I'm trying out this bookmarks extension and this just really is a simple way so you can bookmark parts of your code and etc. But that's not how I use it. I use it to toggle between files. So maybe you've heard in Vim uh, from Primogen, he made Harpoon. Well, basically, I want Harpoon in VS Code, but I'm not using Vim, right? So basically, this is a poor man's Harpoon, right? So actually, let me just really show you how I use this bookmark. You can use this or not. So for example, I'm here inside of this file and I maybe want to work on this other worker file. So if I press, for example, Control P and then I have to press now first Control P and then I have to go to this worker. And for example, I now want to edit this previous file. So now I actually have to press Control P and now I have to go back to it, which is really tedious. But actually we can use bookmarks like Harpoon. Okay, so I can press Alt plus K to toggle a bookmark and then when I go to another file that I want to bookmark like this worker, I can again press Control K and this is going to add a bookmark and of course, use your command palette, whatever extension you have, all of the commands are going to be here. So you can look at your list, jump to your list, set shortcuts and etc. Okay, so now I can use Alt plus J or Alt plus L to go backwards and forwards. So you can see, we can toggle between the files very easily. And this is what I'm editing at the time. So now you can be like a StarCraft player, 200 APM. Let's go, boys. Let's get all of that information on the screen. Yay! You can just do it like this. <laughs> okay, so now you can do this. And boo bam, thank you, man. How easy peasy lemon squeezy that is, friends, right? And of course, if you want to remove the bookmarks, you can set a shortcut to clear them all. But I think that this is really interesting, right? And that's basically it. I really hope that you took something from it. And if you like what you've seen, don't forget to like and subscribe. And you can also support me by becoming a patron. Thank you for watching and catch you in the next one. Peace.